that these transformative experiences are like very, very important for resetting and reshaping. Essentially what we've been saying, it's like you operate on momentum. You just yeah. like got the momentum of the world c clipping at your heels, and it's almost like you can't get out of your own way. Right. So this guy is talking about it from his, a neuroscientist standpoint. So it's really interesting to get like a guy who really knows what the fuck he's talking about kind of affirm what your suspicions might be yeah. in some sort of a vague way. You know, you mean your suspicions being like the reset that comes from mm -hmm. a super duper psychedelic trip? Or yeah. The re yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, man. Like, you know, like you need to step outside yourself. Yes. And or, you know, the reset that comes when you have some tragic event happen in your life or the Sometimes. reset. Yeah. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it's always that moment where you're yeah. like, oh, shit, because it's like it's, it's kind of like. A, a bit a really intense game of make-believe that's what society is like everybody's playing these roles in it and everyone's really committed to the game in the most intense way possible and you get so committed to the particular role that you're playing whatever it may be that you forget that that's just one role out of an infinite number of possible ways that you could be uh you could be you could you don't have to be stuck in your current s system of predilections or to like really like break it down your you, people are either attracted to certain people tend to be attracted to things or repelled by things right and the things that you're attracted to some people aren't attracted to and the things that you're repelled by some people are not repelled by they're attracted to so the question is how much can you uh change your levels of attraction or desire and aversion how how trapped are you in that uh in, in whatever that your particular modality is uh can you get out of that and you sure as fuck can and these the psychedelic trips um are, are definitely one way meditation is another way to figure it out yeah, it seems like we, we whoever we are whoever we are we're, we are operating on some sort of uh an operating system and that operating system is your personality it's like it, it allows you to go through this life with some sort of a weird semblance of how things are going to be because you know how they just were. Yes. And it can be empowering or it can be extremely disempowering, especially if you don't like certain aspects of your past. You know, if they, you, you, you're frustrated with them defining you. Yeah. And that's where things like psychedelic experiences can really come in handy that's because right. they jolt you out of this. Or the death of a loved one could have a similar effect, you know, obviously much more tragic and much more difficult to get out of. But if, you know, you talk to someone and they lost a loved one, regular trivial bullshit is really not going to affect them the same way it's going to affect nope. someone who's living a bored life who wants to gossip about shit. If someone loses their mom, they don't want to gossip about nothing, man. You know, it's like there's just this reality to things that's totally different. Look, people can go and when they go, you, you're going to miss them. You're going to miss your loved ones. Yeah. And we're all going to get out of this one time or another while right. while everybody else is going. Well, that's where it becomes simultaneously tragic. And then uh, on top of it, there's that DMT thing that you get taught where it's like, right. Yes, your mom died. Guess what? You're going to die, too. And everyone's going to die. And everyone's already died. There's so many people died before you. And then somewhere in there... Because, you know, man, that thing you're talking about there, the the waking up that happens from a death that involves grief, uh, that's like the very beginning part of the thing that you're given when a parent dies. But then the next thing you're given is the after that is pretty fucking incredible, which is that you realize that they're, they don't seem to be gone. That, right. that, you know what I mean? That even though that their physical body isn't here anymore, you really do feel them in certain ways inside of you not in a delusional way like oh the spirit of my mom is following me around but it feels like you can feel your mom in your heart all the time always there all the love that they give you all this thing behind all the bullshit everyone's got bullshit because we're human beings but the thing behind all that that's what sticks around inside of you and it's really it's really beautiful and i think you know whenever i take a dmt trip because my tendency is for my attention to go to the grief, for my attention to go to the, oh, God, I don't want to die and I don't want to lose anybody else. And I, I can't believe how many people are going to die and everyone's going to that. My attention habitually goes to there. But whenever you like smoke DMT, one thing that I've noticed when I've done it, uh, 
outside of whatever the statute of limitations is, <laughs> is that uh, you're immediately given this view of one of the most beautiful things you've ever seen in your life. And there the, appears... The most beautiful. The really. most, perhaps, the most beautiful. And the sen- there's, there's sentience to it. It's alive. However, for whatever reason, it does not feel like it's coming from you. It feels like it's outside of you. Things alive. And you're like somebody, you're like somebody who just had a hard day at work and just walked into the ultimate surprise party where everyone's like, hey, and it's like, oh, God, it's beautiful, but I'm so fucking tired. And oh, I'm so sad. And oh, I feel like shit. And it's like the uh, the message it gives you is right. See? You are clinging to this identity of the sad, tired, unhappy person. But if you just let go for a second, you're going to have a really good time at this party. (laughs) (laughs) You know, and that's the identity reset that I think that they're talking about. And it's so possible because that's a game. The game of the hunched over businessman with the briefcase and the weary face and the big size and the depressed tweets and the, oh man, this fucking world is, blah, blah, blah. that's a role. You are playing a part. You are like, you are like fucking Daniel Day Lewis and you are committing fully to the part of the mopey, depressed businessman. L- businessman. That's a part and you're winning awards for it left and right in the form of all the people <laughs> who secretly hate you <laughs> or all the people who are, who, who you make feel sad or all the, all the, you're having a real effect in the world. Well, but, when you, when you try to sell someone something, you're wearing a suit and tie, aren't you doing a ritual dance? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. 